Hey, everybody. Good time of day that it is for you. It's time for Ask Bro, man. It's episode 29. Episode 29. Unbelievable. Uh, episode 29. It is January 7th. It's about 5 p.m. here on the East Coast. We've been having a fun time on Twitch today. Just finished playing Earthbound, which is probably, again, one of my favorite games of all time. It's been really good. I uh, hope you're all doing well. I hope the new year is treating you well. What else is going on? Uh, oh, yeah. K-Cups launched, uh, I guess, today. Actually, if you're listening to this, it'll be it'll be the day. So that'll be fun with King's Coast. That's fucking popping off. But for now, uh, we're going to get into some questions. We're going to answer people, help folks out, and it's going to be a kick-ass time. A kick-ass time. Reminder, if you're listening and you ever want to get involved, uh, if you ever want to tune in and ask a question, we do this live on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Professor Broman. All you ever got to do is hop into my Discord channel, and we will get into it. So let's grab this first person here. This is Bad Karma Lucky. Hello, Mr. Broman. Oh, God, so loud. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank uh, you. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. I turned you down, so hopefully now it should be good. Great. Well, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. So I have a have a few questions here, and the show has been amazing. So every time I listen, I either add one or remove one that I already have. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're uh, progressively answering everyone's questions. Yeah. So my first question is in regards to improving your content. Okay, um, that's a big question. You, yeah, <laughs> you as a broadcaster, when you go back and you review your past broadcasts, what kind of things do you identify or what are you looking for to improve upon? A lot of, uh, lot of implications <laughs> about me going back and reviewing my content. Um, that was supposed to be a joke, but you didn't laugh and I apologize. Um, but yeah, I don't really, I mean... I don't, I don't often go back and sort of review my content, especially since most of the content I create is live. Um, I'm sort of continuously monitoring quality. If, if by quality you mean, uh, you know, like overlays and interaction and things like that, that's something that's sort of being continuously monitored. Uh, but if you're talking about YouTube and things like that, um, I used to do this thing where I would do like a checkup every quarter I would sort of review everything on my channel, like all my emotes, all my overlays, uh, all my nightbot commands, you know, anything that people were interacting with or seeing consistently on the channel, I would sort of, you know, give it a once over and make sure that everything was in the in a place that I liked. Um, and the best way to the best way to describe that is it, you can't really do that if you don't have a direction. Does that make sense? Like, I want my content to feel this way. And so you go over and you review everything and you're like, huh. And when you have a focus like that, shit's going to stand out like a sore thumb. You're going to be like, huh. So like acting like this or talking about this thing doesn't really fit with how I want my channel to run. Um, so that's sort of really general advice. Do you have a specific thing that you're curious about? Uh, no, or, just uh, for just your content. General. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's more just in general. Um, yeah. You know, I, I imagine after uh, after all the years that you've done this, there's probably things that you've learned about yourself going through, and I'm kind of yeah. trying to go through that same thing. So. Exactly. I, I think the other thing is, um, you know, definitely taking take take into account other people's opinions about what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, but you are you are always going to be the most important you know, critique for your content or critic of your content. Uh, because if it's not delivering to whatever standards you have set, uh, it doesn't really matter what anyone else's input is, you know? Sure, I think, yeah. I think uh, especially as your channel grows, you'll, no matter what you're doing, as you get more attention on what you're doing, you're going to hear a lot more dissenting voices. Uh, and if you start to listen to them, you really run a big risk. And that risk is you start developing your content via democracy instead of what it's supposed to be, which is a dictatorship and you're in charge. Uh, yeah. And if you let if you let other people start making your content for you, uh, you're going to start losing whatever it was that drew people to you at first. And you're going to think like, oh, God, why? I don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, when in reality, it's just because you've you kind of lose the soul of your content when you approach things that way. 
totally cool for sure you got any uh okay. follow-ups my guy I, I do i do excellent uh, i love follow-ups so so i'm i'm a, a twitch affiliate and been doing cool. it for, for a little while now so even though i feel like a newbie at the process still <laughs> i have a little bit of time under my belt and so a lot of networking has gone into that and making you know friends of other other streamers and stuff and one thing that comes with that is is hosting and getting hosted and sure. i was wondering if you have any great advice on do's and don'ts for getting hosted uh like once they come in especially large hosts okay uh so to sort of step back to anyone who might be listening to this and they don't understand what a host is um you're going to be if you're on twitch there is a command that will basically send everyone who's watching you into another channel so that's what we're talking about i think the best thing that you can do is have have a spiel ready right you know have your your station identification or have like you know hey what's up my name's so and so we're doing this right now uh usually do this and i'm online around these times every day welcome thanks for being here you know uh just a quick 15 20 second identifier as to who you are and what you do because that's all that's all the time that you're going to get with absolutely everybody there perfect yeah that's great love it <laughs> so i'm just uh i'm writing it down so no that's cool take your time man take all the time you need okay great and then uh the the last follow-up that i would have probably is there's there's tons of games out there in the world. There's tons that you're gonna enjoy. Um, do you do you recommend playing the ones that you know get good viewership on the stream versus the ones that don't, or just play whatever whenever? Uh, I mean, that is a that's a tough question, and you really sort of have to dance around it. You know, it, it's yeah, you need to play stuff that gets you viewership 100, percent but you also need to play stuff that makes you happy 100. percent So, um. My recommendation is always stream the game that allows you to put on the best show. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. So there's a lot of other factors that you can dig into. Like, you know, I've, I've, I've given this advice a lot on stream, but I'll, I'll say it again. You need to pay attention to the Steam charts. You need to pay attention to games that are being purchased, but not streamed. So if a game is the number three overall purchase in the entire world and it's not represented on Twitch, your ass should probably be streaming that game. Now, if that game sucks and it makes you miserable, don't stream it. Um, but like those are sort of like some life hacks or uh, or like, I guess, awareness hacks that you can do when you're streaming is is it's it's not hard to go out there and gather the data necessary to decide, oh, this game is selling really well and and put yourself in the in the buying loop for the game, because then you have a game company that is actively advertising their game. People are going to be actively seeking out uh, actively seeking out games like oh what games do i want to play oh there's all of this advertising money being put into the game and folks come on twitch and look for it uh so picking games that are that so currently you know the hype game that everyone's buying and no one's streaming or uh games that are being sold at a sale price like if there's a huge sale on skyrim it's probably a good time to stream skyrim mm -hmm. if there's uh, a bunch of games in a humble bundle then it's probably a good time to stream one of those games because people are curious about them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a it's been a really great year for games. So there's so many out there that I enjoy playing and it's always just it a has. It's on, been a, okay, it's which... been a it's been a big year. There's been a <laughs> yeah. lot of games that have come out that are interesting for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think uh I think that's all I've got. Awesome, man. Well, I am. Uh, I'm Appreciate glad that it. I could answer all that stuff for you. Do you want to uh, shout out, let people know where they can find you on the interwebs? Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, um, pretty much everywhere is bad karma lucky. All one word, no underscores or dashes. Um, Google finds everything for me, but I'm on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, um, Instagram, all that stuff. Based Fantastic. Based on your feedback for your you, shows. So. <laughs> do you have... Uh, do you have a schedule that people can expect to see your content i do right yeah now? I yeah let on, them know when that is too man 
I'm on every night except for Wednesdays, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern, and then I'm on for a minimum of three hours until pretty much I decide I need to go to sleep. Go to sleep? All right, man. Which is a pretty long time, usually. Excellent. <laughs> so if you're looking for a late night uh, person to tune into, check out Bad Karma Lucky. No spaces everywhere. That is correct. Awesome, thank man. You, man. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. All right, let's get a uh, Halfy or ha Halfy. So this is Halfy. Hello. How you doing, Halfy? What can I do for you? Oh, I'm not too bad. Yourself? I'm I'm wonderful. Uh, it's just a quick one. Um, but I see when you started off your streams, how did you promote your channel? Did you do it through um, social media or through forums? So when I started broadcasting, uh, I guess you would te the technical answer to that would be forums uh, because when I started streaming. I came off of the uh, Speed Demos Archive forums because I was speedrunning a game that I had been active on the forums over there. So um, I was speedrunning Borderlands 2, which was the game I started, and there weren't really any of us that streamed the game that were routing it and, and you know, trying to, you know, get good times and things like that for Borderlands. So I came over to Twitch from the SDA forums and uh, I brought with me a few of the guys that were, you know, we would all just hang out and talk about routing stuff and experiments and things like that. Um, and it was, in general, a good time. So that's how I got started initially. But after I got going, uh, it was, I would, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. I, I really just fucked up <laughs> and I avoided all forms of social media. I was like, I don't need Twitter. I don't need Instagram or Facebook or any of this bullshit. So I really just depended on Twitch's discovery uh, metrics and mechanics to push people towards my stream. Luckily, I played a game in a way that people found interesting. So folks were looking for it. But, um, you know, that is now doing something like that sort of just a horrible idea. If that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's only just really one quick question. That was all. Yeah. Oh, no problem, man. Well, you have a great day, unless you want to shout out where, you know, people can find you on the internet box. Uh, well, I run myself on Twitch. It's twitch.tv forward slash the almighty half horns. The almighty what? Half horns. H half horns? Yeah. Oh, oh, the almighty half horns. Fantastic. Um, well, if there's nothing else, man, uh, I'll let you know. No, go. it was just one question. <laughs> That's cool, dude. You have a no good worries, day. No have a good one. You too. Uh, that actually that actually brings up uh, that actually brings up a really interesting point uh, about social media, and this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately for anyone who's a new broadcaster. So uh, there are a lot of things that you really shouldn't do on social media to promote your content, uh, and something. So it used to be this hashtag people would use. Uh, hashtag support smaller streamers and all this other bullshit and all this other retweeting services and things like that. Um, that's horrible. And people have kind of stopped using those hashtags and things to try and get discovery because the only people searching hashtag support smaller streamers, okay, are other people that are promoting their broadcast and trying to get viewers. But if everyone's trying to get viewers, there aren't any actual viewers supporting that hashtag okay so people kind of trended away from that and now i'm starting to see something else that is just it's equally ineffective and at, at best it's ineffective and at worst it's kind of it's spammy <laughs> and what people are what people are doing now is they're tagging every broadcaster that they are interested in uh, any broadcaster that that they think is cool or want them to check out their content. They'll be like, hey, I'm going live. And then they'll tag like 10 big broadcasters in that tweet. If you are out there and you are doing that, please fucking stop it. Uh, you're devalue devaluing yourself and you're devaluing your brand. Um from the outside it makes you look incredibly beggy and that's not a that's not an image that you want to put out there uh because it looks it makes it look like you're always asking for a handout 
And instead of putting effort into asking for a handout, what you need to be focusing on is putting out awesome content. If you interact with all the people you're tagging behind the scenes, that's cool. But don't tag them when you go live, like build that relationship. It needs to be about that relationship. Um, you know, if you if you have to add hashtags because of a of a sponsored deal, that's completely different. We're talking about you, your go live tweeting, your your check out my YouTube channel, check out my new video. You know, it needs to be about you, not other people. And I think the mistake that folks make is, oh, if I tag all these people, someone will retweet it. Even if they do, um, it, it just like the the optics, the PR of it. It looks like they're doing it out of pity. Um, and again, like it just uh, devalues your content. So please, if you're out there um, and you are curious about how to go about promoting your content, being out, being around, doing stuff, interacting with people is awesome. But when it comes to producing your content, make sure the focus of your content is you, not other people trying to bring attention to it. Because if your content's good, it needs to learn how to stand out on its own. And if you can't make a piece of content and feel proud of it without tagging 100 people to try and get traction, you're really going about it the wrong way. So please, if you're out there making content, make good content, make connections. But when you're presenting it to the world, here's my new video. Here's my new stream. Here's my new post. Don't tag everybody and their grandma in it. You know, if you care about one particular person's opinion, like, hey, I made this new video. What do you think, Drake? And it's a fucking video about his new whiskey or something as a whiskey or bourbon that he just put out. That fucking makes sense. That's totally different from check out my stream at Drake at Rihanna, you know, <laughs> fucking at Katy Perry at Lyric at Summit. You know, uh, it just looks insane. Uh, that is that is the general idea. Uh <laughs> All right, let's grab this person. This is Dressy Chalice. Hey, Dressy Chalice, what's up? I heard, I heard, I heard them for a second. Oh, this is Dressy Chalice. No. Hey, Dressy Chalice, what's up? Hey, what's up, know. man? Heard, I heard. How you doing, dude? Dressy Chalice. Yeah. Dressy Chalice, what's up? So this guy, this guy is trying to sort out. They got the stream on in the background. They're trying to figure out their their mic settings and their audio output settings. Uh, go ahead and do that really quickly. Just mute the stream. Turn on the uh, turn on your microphone. Turn on your headset. All that good stuff. So that way you can be ready and we can chat. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, to sort of continue that conversation uh, that we were having um, a little bit, Dressy Chalice says they do not wish to speak. So I guess we'll just grab someone else. That makes me sad. Maybe you'll get some confidence in a little bit and then we'll talk. But yeah, to follow up, I'm not uh, on the on the tagging people and the hashtag stuff. It's not about. It's not about other broadcasters, big big streamers, whoever you're tagging, feeling annoyed or being mad at you. It's about making sure that you're staying true to your brand. You know, larger broadcasters are going to look at that tweet and they're going to go, I understand you're trying to hustle. But everyone else, even the people they might potentially share it with, is going to look at your tweet and they're going to have a lower opinion of you. And if you're trying to protect your brand and you're trying to grow every impression matters contacting all those people you know in the background is cool if you're trying to build relationships that's fucking awesome and great and it's going to go well in the long term but taking that and putting it out in the public face um it just it's not a smart pr move and i care about you and i don't want you to make mistakes man yeah all right let's grab someone else this is uh rester b it's not a smart pr move uh, you got a, you got the stream up, dude. If you could mute the stream, yeah, that'd be dope. Him? Hey, man, what's up? Hey, uh, not much. Drinking some coffee, actually. Some King's Coast. Oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag ad. I don't know. You probably bought it. I'm just being a dipshit. Yeah. What's up, man? But, uh, what can I do for you? 
Yeah, this is more of like a general business question. Oh, I love um, general business questions. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I don't get to talk about business about, very much, so I get really excited. <laughs> it's actually about coffee, so I'm like a beautiful coffee like fan and fiend, and just like I love it, and so it's definitely like a career I want to go into. Yeah, it's very. It's like not the safest career all the time, if you know well, what I mean. No, I mean no career is technically <laughs> I mean, yeah, safe if you want to work for yourself. Yeah. So like, um, I was just thinking like, I have an opportunity to get college like paid for. Sure. And like, so like that security part is like kind of nice. But yeah. on the other hand, like I also want to like pursue like learning to roast, and so like, if I want to like kind of split my time between both, I'm wondering like what's the best option or if I, I like just focus on one and then do resting like later when I have more time. Well, what are you going to college for? What is a uh, history actually? So, do like, you, so do you give a shit about history? Is I mean, that yeah, like, like I really enjoy history. Okay. As well. So it's like, it's not something that I like hate, you know? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Why? But like, I'm just, I'm curious if you want coffee to be your full-time job mm -hmm. or career why my my thought is why would you waste any time on anything else yeah i guess i don't know <laughs> it's just like because like i'm engaged and so like there's like sense of like security in a job like teaching obviously sure and so it's like you want to provide for like that future family i guess you're engaged that's cool what are you doing now what's your uh what's your job now currently i'm actually working at starbucks which is like fake coffee but no you know, i mean hey i worked at starbucks for, for five years don't <laughs> don't you know need to shit on coffee no, or starbucks I mean, a, um yeah so so company. you're you're there are you a manager right now shift uh, not you know? yet i'm a i just i'm not like new new but uh um I'm fairly new, so like I'm not like super high up or anything. Okay. Um, but I mean, I enjoy it, and they like pay for college, so there's like that part of it. Sure. sure. Are so who's paying for your college? Is it Starbucks Star or yeah, Starbucks? Like they have a program now where like they like pay for your college. If okay. You work I'm familiar with that week. program. Yeah. So I mean, my recommendation is if you're working with Starbucks right now, well, first of all, you need to figure out what the fuck you want. Okay. Like the idea of being a history teacher, but also being a full-time roaster is a little silly and yeah. you need to figure out which one of those things you want. Mm -hmm. If the only thing that appeals to you about teaching is the security that it's wears out things. quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are plenty of people who have taken jobs and started their own business that have a pretty secure check. Mm -hmm. Um, but if the only thing that's attractive to you about any job is, is, oh, well, it's a secure job. That's, I mean, there's just nothing there for you in the yeah. long term. Like, that's not I've had I plenty know. of secure jobs and none of them made me happy. Cause like, that's what, like, I want to do something I'm passionate about. Like, that's why like yeah. when you and Goff like talk about like everything that you've done, I'm just like, that's how I view life. Like, I don't want to sit in a job and work eight hours and not be inspired by anything, you know? Sure. So, um, like, how did you just like, you just got to do it, I guess, like take those risks of like, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm not a very I'm I'm a very like entrepreneurial risk taking like mm -hmm. that's my personality type. Like yeah. I would rather like the fear of missing out, like the fear of fucking up and having a regret and being like, fuck, if I would have only done this thing, like that's all I had to do was just say yes. This one time my life would be completely different. Like that mm -hmm. fucking horrifies me. Um, you know, so I will, I will try every single new thing out there if I don't think it's going to fucking, you know, kill me. Yeah. Um, and you got, I mean, like you seem very smart about like the risk you do. Yeah. Like, I mean, you put in the work. Yeah. I, I think that it, everybody asks like, everybody acts like risk taking is this really weird behavior that doesn't make any sense to them. But the reality is if you are good at taking risk, you understand everything about a choice before you make it. It doesn't mean you need to take two years to do it, but it means you should take 10 hours and figure out, oh, I want to start a fucking coffee company. Well, how successful are coffee companies? What's the failure rate on a coffee company? What are what are some of the things that make things work for companies, etc.? Like you can go in with a smart idea yeah. of, of what's going to work. Uh, so I guess for you, my first suggestion is one, figure out exactly what you want to do Two, If you really care about coffee, Starbucks will send you to fucking roasting college. 
Okay. Like they'll that. send yeah, you, exactly you can gonna... become a master roaster at Starbucks. Like you can coffee. There's so much information about it out there for free. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can learn so much just by visiting local coffee shops, asking questions, um, finding out i i went back to st louis uh over the holidays i went to my favorite coffee place in the in the in the whole you know city and i sat there and i asked the their roaster who was in the back working i asked him a crap ton of questions he was super fucking annoyed but i didn't care um yeah. you know because i was there i was there to learn uh i think that it's incredibly important to take every reasonable risk that's presented to you um Because it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. I mean, I've listened to a lot of your, your like business, like whenever you do talk about it or like yeah. anything like that. So like I've learned a lot. Um, one like follow up quick. Sure. Thing no, you ask as many, like, ask as many follow ups as you need, my friend. So like just with, so like I'm engaged and like, there's no doubt in my mind that like she's the one and she's extremely supportive and she's on the edge of, she's the type of person who's like, <coughs> very practical and very like like that's where that like mm. safety kind of thing comes from it's sure like, that's who she is you know great and like i'm not gonna try to change her like that's who she is and like um that's just not who i am so like from for you like how does that work in like your and your wife's relationship is just like sure uh like, that, i mean that no that's a great question uh every every relationship is, is complicated right mm -hmm. um but if like so for some people safety and security is awesome it's great and for some people it's like suffocating yeah. um you just need to over you need to to, to talk mm -hmm. uh you know and get over the fear of talking about what you want like if yeah. you're aren't if you aren't having the conversation you know daily you know hey i really want to do this these are the mm -hmm. things that i'm looking at right now about it you know there is a way to talk to 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 who I mean, if you want to marry this person, you need to be able to talk to them about everything, including your dreams and things that make you unhappy if you don't chase them. Yeah. You know, okay. there's nothing wrong with, you know, Amy is a very like cautious person compared yeah. to me. Like I'm the one that takes the risks and she's the one that keeps me grounded. Um, And that's fine. But you need to do what you can and use her desire for stability as an asset when you're having conversations say like hey i really want to do this um and the fact that you have to convince her that it's a good idea is great because if you can <laughs> yay you like it's a great her. idea yeah. um you know and this is how this is how things work with amy and myself and 90 percent of the time we'll come to an agreement. But at the end of the day, if you really feel strongly and she won't get on board, you're still probably going to have to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, because it's, I don't think she's the type of person like that. Like, I think it's just something that we like actually might have to like discuss. Like you said, not just be like, have like this weird, like, you know, that person <laughs> doesn't like agree with it totally, but yeah. they love you and want to support you. It's like, no, like, why do you think this isn't the best? Or like, is this like I've put in this much work, you know, and try to like work something out like that? So, yeah, exactly. I've you, like I know, like your past relationship, like streaming, like and all of that. Like I've heard you talk about that. And, yeah, like, no, it didn't work out. You very definitely well. don't want something like that. <laughs> no, yeah, it didn't work out. Very well. so. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a touch. It's so. a touchy subject. Like I don't, yeah. I don't want to tell you how to live your life, but I will tell you God. that if you want to chase your dreams, you need to be able to talk to who you are with about them and help mm -hmm. them understand make them understand because if it is your dream you have to be willing to fight for it and if the first fight is with someone you love boy you're goddamn lucky because most people don't have that mm -hmm. you know they have to get into a fight with you know someone who doesn't care about them or maybe right. they're all alone and they're they're fighting against the entire world um yeah. you know if you're if the proving ground for your idea is with someone who loves you and knows you intimately uh they probably know you better than you know yourself that's great because mm -hmm. like you you want that person to like have to like win like on your sucky days to like be able to come to them and not like get like shit on for it basically yeah exactly so. okay well i think that's it i mean yeah i don't know i just wanted your your input which <laughs> for sure dude nice. i mean you know yeah like so to wrap the conversation up figure out exactly what you want Mm -hmm. uh, I would say if you're not psychotically passionate about history, I would stay away from it, honestly. Mm -hmm. 
anyone who wants to be a professor or a teacher that isn't incredibly passionate about the subject, um, it's not a good idea, you know? Okay. Yeah. But you were a teacher, right? <laughs> yeah, I taught. I taught yeah. for a little while. And I, I was, I'm very passionate about yeah, what I, yeah. what I taught. Um, but I will tell you if I wasn't, I would have fucking hated that job. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so make sure that, you know, if you want to teach whatever, but it sounds like you have a lot of doubts and I would, ex I would explore your options before feeling like you have to go to college. Yeah. yeah. Cause you certainly fucking don't have to go to college if you don't want to, what yeah. you need Especially to do in the coffee industry. <laughs> yes. What you need to do is start actually doing shit. Mm -hmm. Go out there and try and roast some coffee. You can do it on your stovetop at home. Just yeah, start actually, start doing. I was just looking into that actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. Start but. start doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that will answer a lot of your questions. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, man. It's uh, definitely inspiring. <laughs> just you and Goff both to be able to like watch just everything that's happening. So, I don't know. You guys are. I don't know. You inspire me a lot uh, of the time. So <laughs> thank you very much, man. Well, I wish I wish nothing but success for you. And I'm always <laughs> available on Instagram, Twitter, wherever. Mm -hmm. And if you need to follow up about the follow up, you let me know. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Thank All you. Right. Talk and to you later, dude. Bye. All right. Yeah, man. Having a having conversations, having conversations with people that you love or people that love you about doing something that they may not necessarily want is uh it's tough, but it's necessary. Incredibly necessary. All right. Well, we have come to the point currently, and I can't believe I'm saying this, we actually don't have anybody in line right now to ask any questions. So if you are listening and you're curious about, this is actually great. We've never had an opportunity where you didn't have to roll the dice against 20 other people. So if you have a question right now, this is actually a great time to get in um and okay there we go that took all of two seconds uh hello last esper how are you the last the last esper how are you doing my friend also maybe check all of your audio devices like you could check your microphone and you can check your head. So this is my favorite part. I wonder how many times people are listening to the podcast like, where are these fucking people going to learn to check their fucking headset and their goddamn microphone? It's like every goddamn time. <laughs> Who knew? All right. Well, last Esper, while you're figuring it out, I'm going to grab someone else. Uh, let's get. um, Let's get Alex the Great. What's up, Alex the Great? Hey, Brahman, how you doing? I am doing wonderful. Thank you for having all of your stuff ready. Actually, I was checking that when you pulled me in. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Good, good, good. What can I do um, for you, my friend? So you actually touched on something a little earlier that I actually, um, I, I, I didn't have a question until you mentioned it. Um, net networking uh, and, and trying to find people that are similar to your uh, it's similar in your in your growth, you know, I, I'm sure I'm, an affiliate. Yeah. I'm not as high up as, you know, someone like you who's, you know, got a thousand viewers, you know, daily and stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not going to want to try and, you know, network with you as fast unless I'm up higher and be able to we're both able to benefit. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to let you know that you're on the right path thinking that mm -hmm. way. Um, when you're trying to find a partner to make content with, it always works out better to either uh, I guess work with a veteran content creator that has helped a lot of other folks. So you're, you're kind of an expected part of the process. And this is a rarity, okay. right? Like somebody who's like, and this is more like in the YouTube space, right? Like, Oh, Hey, I have this team of YouTubers and we're looking to bring on, you know, another person for our vlog. You look interesting, blah, blah, blah. And then you can build your brand off of that. You know, that's sort of, I don't want to discount that. That's why I bring it up first. Right. Um, but in general, 99% of the time, what you want to do is work with someone who is the same size as you. So your thought process on that is bang on. Um, and so I wanted to commend you for that. Uh, Thank you. So and a lot of I mean, you're ahead of the game when you're thinking like that. Most people think, like, oh, I have to find someone who's like 100 times bigger and like make them fall in love with me. And then they raid me and play with me all the time and blah, blah, blah. Which is not how it works. Uh 
I actually, I've been working on getting some members of a, a Twitch team that was started by one of my friends on here because they started out, uh, nobody on the Twitch team was partnered. And now two years later, everybody on the team is partnered. Um, impressive. Yeah, it is. It's very impressive. And, and uh, you know, their perspective is probably going to have a lot of value. So listen to that in the future. But the best thing you can do to find people of your size, at least if you're on Twitch, is like literally maybe take a day and don't stream during your usual time slot and see who else is around during when you usually stream. So like, let's say you stream a uh, fucking Fortnite, and you <laughs> usually have 10 viewers. Take a night off, take a day off or, or start an hour late, whatever, and an hour early and go into that directory on Twitch and look at everyone else who has 10 viewers and go into their stream and spend, uh, spend 10 minutes in there. Say hi, don't say hi. Just figure out whether or not it's someone that you'd like working with. And if it is, say hi in chat, start building that relationship. Say, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. Reach out to him after stream, hit him up on Twitter. Hey, you know, I usually stream around the same, same time slot. You want to do squads sometime, et cetera? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's just at that point, just going in the directory and finding people. Uh, I mean, that's one way. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I mean, like, that's it. That's it. You're going to have to go find the people that you want to work with. Um, right. And. And yeah. that's what I was looking to see if there was any like particular ways to find people because you obviously you you built a directory from the ground up pretty much with with a with a handful of other people in the Destiny directory. So your networking was completely different than anybody else's. Yeah, that I sitting uh yeah sitting near the top of a pyramid is a little bit of a different yeah. <laughs> scenario. No, I, I get it. Yeah, it's no, when you build something and everyone else, yeah, I get it. Uh, I mean that's how that's how a lot of my networking uh, happened in the speedrunning community. I would just find mm -hmm. people who were streaming at the same time as me. Gotcha. Um, okay. You know, and then I had the forums that I was active on. Uh, since the speedrunning community was so diverse, there was always people uh, that were interested. You know, like, oh, you speedrun, what do you run? Oh, this, I run this. Come check out my stream. I'd love to, you know, teach you uh, about, you know, X game or Y game. So I think that that is, you know, that is sort of the best thing. <laughs> Aside from gotcha. finding people who stream in your time slot, figure out who's who's really involved with your community. See if the game that you're playing has a forum. Go get active over there. Being active in community around whatever it is that you're producing, whether it's a game or it's a, some sort of like you know fashion, it doesn't matter. Being involved in the community for whatever it is you're producing content is huge, and it will pay so like such massive dividends over time because then everyone's going to know who you are. They're more likely to show up and say hi. You know, it's a uh, it's kind of an investment game. Gotcha. OK, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, I, I gravitate more towards like I, when I gravitate toward a game, like, you know, I look at, you know, obviously the Destiny directory is a big one, um, Warframe and Division, like com like where I look for games where devs are very involved in the community because I don't yeah. I don't want to play a game where, you know, the, the company just puts out a game and it's like, all right, here you go. Have sure. fun. But yeah. Being able to build something, you know, perfect example, the division, it literally they just put out a patch that changed the entire thinking of the game. Yeah. So it, it having something like that, it definitely helps. Um, so, yeah. OK, the forums is something I didn't even think about, but I, uh, that definitely makes sense. Forums forums are still, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because as, as high tech as things get, I, I like the mm -hmm. idea. Forums are sort of like really old web web 1.0 stuff, right? Like you, right. forums were around before Facebook. And it's interesting how, you know, if you're willing to go out there and get involved in a forum space, the impact is almost greater because you never know who's on a forum. <laughs> you never know who's right. moderating that forum, who they are, what they might become. Uh, but the one thing you know for sure about the market of people who's on the forum is everyone who's there is incredibly fucking involved with that game and right. or or that whatever X you know, that particular makeup line, uh, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, the people are going to be so engaged that your interaction there is going to trickle out in a much bigger way than if you were to just sign up kind of one to one network. So if you're pressed for time and you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't have time to fucking go wherever and do everything. Well, you know, you've got a phone and you can hop on the forums and discuss whatever the topic of the day is and then 
go from there. That's good information. Thank you. It, 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 it opened new pathways for, for my thinking on that too. So I like, I, I look in, I look on Twitter and I, I, I sort of look in directory. My job doesn't give me a lot of time to do that between streaming and, and the job, but knowing that, you know, the forums is another way to do it. It's it, I can, I can look at my, look at forums while I'm at work. That's easy enough to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome, man. Anytime, dude, you want to shout out where everybody can find your face? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm Alex the Great on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, it's A L E X T H uh, E and then G R three four T. Um, unfortunately, oh, I can't get that that actual name. Understood. To, it's uh, unfortunate, but I'm working on it. I'm trying to get that that name changed. Any, I mean, it'll eventually, right? Or or you'll get I, so I, big I it doesn't matter. Account. Yeah. I know the account. It's it's there. Nobody follows it. Nobody has it. It's just it's just sitting there, and it's just. It kills me that I can't get it. <laughs> All right, man. But thanks, man. I appreciate it. Cool, dude. You have a good one. Thank you. You too. All right. Let's grab this human being. What's up, Theistic Wolf? How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. You're doing Let's well? Say. All right. I like it. I like it. How are you doing, bro, man? I'm doing great. I'm having a fucking awesome time. Oh, yeah. I've been watching... For the past few hours, kind of missed the start of the Aspro Man because I was showing my dad some VR. He was, <laughs> he was wanting to see the new gun game. Oh, VR is great, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my question is kind of minor compared to the last one. The last one sort of went in depth. I just have a small. Oh, I like. I mean, hey, any anything I can do, anything I can do. Uh, I'm just wondering where the Storytime Sundays went. Oh, you want to know what happened to... So if you are if you are listening and you don't understand what this is, uh, I used to have a piece of content that I would do semi-regularly called Storytime Sunday where we just talk about my life. Um, I stopped doing it because uh, I didn't enjoy it anymore. Uh, That's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you should you know. always look forward to Mondays because those would be recorded and usually up and so i could just on monday on the way to and from school or work yeah. I just listen to story time sunday with professor broman well and yeah i mean i i, under, I mean like I, under, stopped. I understand uh you know i mean story time sunday and all of the derivatives of it eventually led to this podcast um, you know, I really tried to make it work long term, man, but I've only had I've only had a, a I've had a set amount of really interesting things that happened to me in my life. And it turns out it's about five tight hours of, you know, comedy. But after that, it's just okay. nothing. And so, yeah. you know, I don't I don't want to any good content creator knows when a bit of content is dried up. You know, five hours of really good comedy is a career's worth of uh of work for a comedian like a solid a solid decade of specials oh, and yeah. i would do Just do the same thing over and i over would again. do that much comedy every single sunday and when you frame it up that well, that way you kind of start to understand why it would get exhausting and then you know yeah people also stopped enjoying it because they're like i already heard this shit tell me about some more funny shit that happened in your life and i'm like this is literally all of it there is no more <laughs> um you know so maybe one day it'll come back and you'll be able to pick it up on a netflix stand-up special but i mean until then uh i i really you know you know i i do vlogging i do other stuff you know on on instagram i try and show a little bit of my everyday life but you know the extraordinary things that happened to me because i was poor as ever living shit and i worked god awful minimum wage jobs and all that stuff you know that's not really part of my life anymore so it's kind of hard to you know keep telling the kind of stories people want when the sort of things aren't happening to me anymore yeah i understand yeah i was just curious because i didn't like I didn't look into it too much after it stopped. I didn't like look for VODs that talked about why it stopped. So I was just curious. 
Yeah, no, man. That's, I appreciate you. I appreciate you asking. You probably got a question that a lot of people have wanted answered for a while. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Anything else I can do Thank for you? Thank you for your time. Uh, no. All right, Not man. Really. We have you a good one. You? Yeah, dude. Fucking kick ass. <laughs> have a good one. All right. You too. Um, you know, he actually brings up a really interesting point, and this is something I've I've meant to talk about on the podcast for a while now. And uh, I guess this sort of just is the right time. But, you know, as a as a creator, no matter what you're doing, there comes a time when you have to change and sort of walk away from stuff you've done for a long time. Some stuff's repeatable forever, um, but there's a finite amount of particular types of content. You know, um, a lot of the content that I did on Twitch to start with was comedy based and comedy comes from life. <laughs> and when you start streaming on Twitch, and this is this is a Twitch specific problem, that life that you had <laughs> goes away. Uh, you go from uh, you go from you go from having you know a wealth of things you go out every day you go out to eat you hang out with your friends all this other stuff and then when you transition from that into the hardcore 12 to 18 hours a day of just streaming or just creating content your life becomes dramatically uh less interesting <laughs> um so you have to be able to transition in and out of that if you're the kind of person whose whole all of your content is couched on you know yeah you might stream video games but people tune in every day to hear what the fuck you're doing with the rest of your life you need to make sure that you preserve the rest of your life and you don't devote all of it to one thing uh it's part of remaining authentic to who you are you have to understand where that balance is uh for, for me, that particular style of content, which was like stand-up comedy based off of my life, uh, had a limit because my life dramatically changed once I went into full-time streaming, which is obviously uh, <laughs> a big change from working a minimum wage job in a psychiatric hospital where wacky shit would happen to me all the time. Uh, I didn't handle that transition very well personally. You know, I tried to force it. I tried to say, oh, no, I'll just fucking I'll do fun, silly shit all the time and bird to daddy do. And like, no, it just didn't happen. And I couldn't accept uh, this idea that that I had, you know, I just needed to walk away from something. So as you grow and, you know, as your style of content like evolves and you do whatever it is that you want to do, make sure you're paying attention to how things change so that you don't end up like, you know depleted or in a state where you can't produce the style of content that people want for me not being able to do story time sunday or that comedy based content wasn't like death bells for my channel but if that had been the core reason why people tuned in to watch me was just a laugh uh i would have been in trouble so make sure you're paying attention to not only you know when what where how but like this is sort of like a a 201 or a 301 course in content creation, you have to make sure that uh, whatever your draw is stays preserved as you get focused on your grind of growing whatever your channel is, whatever your style of content is. All right. This is Cosmic. How you doing? Oh, what is up, bro, man? How are you? I am I am great, sir. What can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> am I too loud? I no, good? you're good. I adjusted you. Uh, thanks, man. Hey, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for everything you do, man. It's so inspirational and uh, listen to your podcast all the time. So, um, yeah, dude, my question is pretty, uh, I don't know, it's it's different from streaming, but uh, I don't know if I, I, I messaged you on Instagram. Um, I'm, I'm in a band. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember said message, alleged yeah. <laughs> message, I recall. <laughs> you is my band right now what we're doing is we're kind of uh cosmic anything. you're kind of cutting in and out oh do you hear me better now yeah 
Is that good? Okay. Keep cool. your keep your mouth close to your microphone. I think that was the problem. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so we're nope. <laughs> I lost him again. Oh uh, dear. You guys hear me now? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. It keeps going in and out. Yeah, it does for sure. Dude. I'm so sorry, man. Then you don't have to apologize to me. Take your time. Figure it out. I'm not um, in a rush. <laughs> so um, I think if I sit right here, this is good. Um, so my band is in a state of rebranding. Sure. Um, we are uh, recording with a producer. I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, well, Paramore and Under Oath and stuff. Yeah. Um, he's done bands like that. His name is James Paul Wisner. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is we're re-releasing an EP. And we're thinking of kind of uh, what do you think of of trying to brand music or a band through Twitch? Um, I think it's a great idea. No one's done it. I mean, and a great idea because no one's done it. Like it's a solid concept. Cool. Yeah, because like we were we were you know talking about it, and um, it's it's been re I think our music is kind of there. You know, we've been working really hard on it for years. Yeah. And you know, we just been we're. We've been trying to find a way to reach out to uh, different communities because, uh, I don't know, man, it's so hard to. Uh, That's hard to get, get attention. Out, yeah. Right. On social media. And, and the music industry is like saturated, just like, you know, probably like the Twitch gaming aspect of Twitch. I mean, it's mm -hmm. you know, saturated. But yeah, man, I just wanted to see what you thought of that. Um, uh, I think it's really great. What is your approach? Do you know what your approach is? Yeah, or are so, you asking for one? <laughs> no, we kind of have an idea I was going to share with you. It's uh, so we have a single that would be coming out. Um, and what we're thinking of doing is we're making a band Twitch channel. Yep. And that we're going to like announce it on all of our uh, social media platforms. Sure. We'll be streaming live like the music video, like the release of it. Gotcha. You know what I mean, cool. And making it an after, event. Yeah, right. And then, um, you know, have that day we'll set it up and then watch it with you know our fans or anybody that pops in and then after that kind of have like a Q&A for like an hour with everybody that's solid um, so yeah and then like maybe like an idea of like how do we continue that or how you think we should approach you know music with twitch you know what I mean? yeah I mean you know there's a lot of people uh that do music on twitch so I hope you've been paying attention to how they do things um, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm the sure. I'm not the most ingrained under the musical side of Twitch, but I know like, you know, Dead Mouse and, uh, you know, a lot of I guess a lot of EDM folks. This is another reason why I'm excited. Uh, a lot of the music that's represented on Twitch is EDM. It doesn't really have a lot of representation from other artists currently. Yeah. Like there's a few people here and there, but it is definitely not. You know, I mean, like if you go onto to any Twitch channel and they're trying to do copyright free music, it is the same shit everywhere. So the fact that you are doing a different style of music is great. Um, my only piece of advice, it sounds like what you're doing is a cool play. Uh, I would, and I don't know if you can do this because you're working with a producer, but if your goal is to just get your music into as many people's hands as possible, mm -hmm. I would try yeah. and distribute it and like send an email to fucking everybody that you know on Twitch and say, hey, you can use our full album and you can you can play it for free on twitch whenever you want no give way. me one yeah. second my dog's oh, come, on, come on come on <laughs> real life dude recorded live <sighs> <laughs> sorry my guy dude, okay i'm back that's, that's no problem dude um yeah man that's really cool i've actually thought about that um we're actually local in tampa too um, yeah so we've been playing you know around here for a long time but yeah um we're everywhere actually on spotify and all that but so mm -hmm. we could just kind of message any like you think just any i don't know big streamers and anybody i mean big small it doesn't matter every listen counts right 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 yeah. um you know that's the other mistake is like if you just focus on like i only want the top 100 people like if you get them that's fucking dope if you yeah. don't and you give up you're an idiot 
uh, you need to be pushing uh, your music everywhere that you can because the more people listen to it, the, the greater your chances are of success. Uh, the greater, you know, if your music's great and everyone loves it, uh, you know, it just takes time, it takes traction, it takes word of mouth. And so the more distribution you can get out there, the better it's going to be for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you helping us out with that. <laughs> no, I mean, like, no, I'm 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 really excited and intrigued. And you said you're in Tampa. I mean, if you're in Tampa, please send me an, an email about everything you're doing. You know, maybe if everything meshes right, we could get you on stage at Guardian Con. Like, I don't know. Uh Dude. It's all about, you know, it's, it's just about, you know, taking chances. You've got a great opportunity here. You managed to lasso me. So, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much, man. <laughs> really. <laughs> thank you, dude. Uh, I hope yeah. that uh, I hope that it goes well. Uh, do you want to let everybody know, like, when you're dropping your, your fucking album and where <laughs> they can tune in for this stream and everything that you've already got lined up? Dope, man. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, actually, we have a full-length album out right now. It's uh, called Living Fiction. Our name is Never Tell, N-E-V-E-R-T-E-L. Okay. Um, we're on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere, you know, music is sold digitally. Um, so, yeah, you can find us there and Never Tell Official on Instagram and all that stuff. But, yeah, man, I, I really, I just wanted to also say, man, what you're doing, dude, is like, it's so nice and um dude nobody should take this for granted dude because like the knowledge you put out there man is crazy i, I listen and watch your streams all the time thank you man i thank that you, is dude. my goal is to try and make it easier for everybody so <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> that's that's nice to hear that it's working um yeah, yeah i will so everybody definitely go check out uh was it never never tell never yeah. tells album if you're listening to this and you're like i want to listen to What's your style? Like, I know you said you're like working with Paramore's producer and stuff, but like, what's your yeah. what's your jam? What do you do? Um, a lot of people kind of say it's like Linkin Park, so it's like rock, hip hop. Pop if you like music. a little rock, hip hop fusion, you should <laughs> definitely go check out Never Tell. They're literally anywhere you can listen to music. You're on SoundCloud, right? Yes. yes Good. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're literally anywhere you can listen to music. Go check them out. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro, man. <laughs> All right, my dude. You have a great day. All right, dude. You too, man. Thank you. Peace. All right. We're going to grab one more person today from Discord, and then uh, we'll we'll wrap up Le Episode. Uh, That's not even the right way to say anything, you idiot. Uh, I know it's not. So let's grab, uh, let's grab Nathan Brain. How you doing, Nathan? I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing great, and I am turning you down right now. Sorry. <laughs> nah, it's all good, dude. It's okay. Uh, it's all thank good. Thank you for pulling me in. Uh, this is the first time I've actually been able to tune in live to the podcast. So oh, really? Like, well, yeah, fucking I, thank I, I, you I've for been listening to them on iTunes, but this is the first time I've been to a live one. So. Well, thank you for fucking listening, my dude. You are <laughs> the person that I make these for. If that's the, <laughs> you know, that, that's why. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I've got two questions. Um, I haven't really been streaming for a while and i'm still really really new to it excellent I, my computer is basically a toaster it doesn't do a whole lot it sure plays the most basic of stuff i so started streaming, on a laptop i feel you yeah, yeah so my streaming is kind of limited to my playstation which is fine um i mostly use my playstation play a lot of fortnite and destiny and, and uh some other stuff but um until, until I get the stuff on my computer, I, you know, I've been kind of brainstorming ways that I can kind of get myself out there. So once I can really stream, uh, once I'm like done with school and stuff, once I can do all that, I'll, I'll have everything connected and ready. Gotcha. Um, and so I've, I've got two, two questions. Um, one is how, how do you go about creating, I guess, your brand and then trying to get it all together like say you come up with something that you want to make um for your name but it's like taken elsewhere does it matter if you're using three four different types of names for your stuff uh-huh yeah okay i mean that's that's a question that uh i get a lot or uh i guess i haven't gotten a lot on the podcast but i've gotten a lot on on instagram and stuff so 
Uh, the idea of having a personal brand uh, as far as like logos and stuff is awesome. Uh, I think it's great and long term. Uh, if you have a really strong personality, having a personal brand that matches your personality makes sense. So, you know, a lot of if you look at a lot of my branding stuff, uh, it's got a lot of green in it. It's dynamic. I try and make it pop. It's loud, um, <clears throat> but it's not like fucking super annoying. Like it's not hyper colors and shit like that. Right. Um so I think it's incredibly important to, you know, brand yourself properly. So whatever you're doing, make sure it matches your personality. Okay. Um, but in the beginning, it's not that important. Uh, what what is important is making sure that the content you're putting out is good. So okay. uh, I feel like the big danger is that a lot of folks kind of put the cart before the horse when it comes to branding, like they're going to spend all this time invested in like finding like oh god well what color should i use for this when like really they should be focusing on just doing more content yeah uh and i've seen that a lot you know uh you'll have people that have incredibly polished visual brands and their content's just crap uh because they haven't spent any time working on refining that uh you know they're putting a really nice coat of paint on a giant fucking turd so uh you need to make sure not to say that you can't have a solid personal brand, like obviously, and be good at what you're doing. Uh, but my advice always to people starting out is focus on the craft of whatever it is that you're doing before you start focusing on the bells and whistles. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and as far, oh, then, sorry. And to go back to answering like your name question, like you're trying yeah. to get the same name everywhere. What if it's taken? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there are some folks that have 10 different social accounts and there's 10 different names. Right. You know, uh, trying to get it to match up is great. If you can, it's cool. If not, trying to get as close as possible, you know, by adding a number one or whatever. Right. Because uh, I'm like super OCD and I want everything to match because then in turn, it would be easier to yeah, it's find easier. everything on the multiple platforms. Sure, sure. I mean, try and get it to match as much as you can. But if not, just get creative with it. OK, OK. Yeah. Um, and then my second question is being still super new and everything um do you know of any locations or the possibilities of um creating like tutorials on how to do stuff with Streamlabs and like chatbot and other Streamlabs Streamlabs uh they are incredibly engaged with uh the development of their thing usually you can go to Streamlabs they got tutorials for every feature that they have Okay. Um, they're doing it right. And honestly, it's one of the reasons why they're so dominant right now is because yeah. they decided to take the fucking time and make their own tutorials. Because why wouldn't you? Um, right. You know, uh, when I was started and you needed to use Nightbot for everything or, or night dev alerts, you had to go find all these third party information to try and cobble together your alert system. And part of that was because Twitch was really new. Um, uh-huh. And you know, things like that. But it's, I mean, they're a great example, not only of like, they're an in-house for everything and they're constantly expanding. Like Streamlabs just released uh, Streamlabs OBS, which is literally <laughs> a streaming software, you know, the open source software, which is what OBS stands for, open broadcast right. software, designed by them for the people that use their uh, alert system. So it is, you know, a fully integrated system uh, and I'd recommend checking that out absolutely if you're getting started because it helps a ton. Um, actually, I'd recommend it to anyone who's starting. Uh, I know you're on console right now, but if you're listening and you want to start broadcasting, Streamlabs OBS is literally all of the the shitty hundred different moving parts that you have to have to to get a really nice, clean, visual running broadcast going. It used to involve managing like five or six different websites and then pushing them all to one location. It right. takes all of that and it puts it in the program. So uh, I highly would rec- I would highly recommend that. So what's your second question? Sorry, I got on a tangent. <laughs> oh, that that pretty much was the question of trying to get to know on a more advanced level of how to use all of those programs for streamers because i mean i've been i've been dabbing with Streamlabs for the last couple days yeah 
Um, but really, all I've gotten to do is just monitoring the chat, and that that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my my advice then is to just keep learning by doing. Uh, okay. The best thing, the best thing that you're ever going to do as a broadcaster is just sit down with the, the hardware, with the software that you're using and learn by doing. And just um, you know, I can sit here and, and give you a 25 hour tutorial, but until you've clicked <laughs> all the buttons yourself, right. selected the audio ranges yourself, you're not going to retain the information and have a functional understanding of it uh, to the level that you're going to need uh, until yeah. you do it yourself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I typically learn by doing myself. Excellent. You're you're on the right way. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for uh, for everything you've you've answered the questions that I've been kind of thinking about the last couple weeks. And, hey man. Um, no problem. I just want to say, uh, you Goth and Kevin and all of you guys are some of my favorite people, and uh -huh. I look up to you guys a lot. Like life goals with not only. You know, you're you're doing what you love by playing video games for a living, but also just the, all the side businesses and stuff. Like I look at that and I'm like, that's something I could do. Yeah, you can never stop hustling, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. It's awesome. I, I love you guys. I I really appreciate that, dude. That's that's really really kind. Um, I will I will pass along the accolades, uh, to the other dudes. Uh, do you want to let everybody know where they can find you? Now that um, they've they've heard all about your thought process, and they. They're like, this yeah. guy's smart. So let them know where they can find you. Yeah. So uh, I don't have a whole lot of like I use everything, but I don't have much linked to just my streaming and social aspect. So Twitch, um, I'm Nate Dog 0729, N-A-T-E-D-O-G-G -G okay. 0729, no spaces. And then it's the same for Twitter. And then um, I'm here on Discord at Nathan underscore Brian. Uh, but I haven't gotten around to everything else yet because I couldn't really figure out how I wanted to brand myself. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Yeah. Well, best of luck figuring it all out, man. You have a great day. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, getting me in here. Anytime, dude. Yeah, keep it up. <laughs> Will do. Peace. <laughs> all right. Peace. What a cool guy. All right. Well, that that's it. That's fucking that's the whole that's the whole shebang of doodles, man. We made it through episode 29 of Ask Bro Man. Feels good. Really solid questions today about all sorts of stuff. Uh, I absolutely love today's episode. If you liked it, please uh, make sure to rate the podcast, subscribe to the podcast. If it provided any value for you, if it made you think of somebody in your life and you're like, they need to hear that, please share it with them. Um, I am, I am, uh, Always, I always love hearing from you guys. Uh, I got a chance to read some of the reviews you've left on the podcast platform on uh, on iTunes, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is super nice." So thank you all so much. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will talk to y'all next time. Peace.